Hello and welcome again to another episode of the Long Gone Loser Rock Show. Today we're going to talk about Screeching Weasel. My history with Screeching Weasel goes right back to My Brain Hurts. The week that that was released, uh, I remember going to Thrash Grind and Grunge in Adelaide, which is what we always did every Saturday. We'd get our skateboards and we'd go skateboarding. And we would usually go to the record store at the end of the day and, and just hang out and whatever. And I remember we were in there and uh, one of the guys said, oh, Screeching Weasel albums come in, do you know them? And I was like, no, I don't. I don't know who that is. And I was probably wearing a Ramon shirt at the time, pretty sure I was. And uh, they said, oh, you're going to love them. And I remember they put it on and the first song comes on, Making You Cry, and instantly I was blown away. I had to have that album. And so I remember it was on CD and because uh, they didn't have the vinyl yet. Uh, but I bought the CD and I took it home. And me and my friends, we listened to that record 10 times in a row for the next five hours because the record was like half an hour long. And we just sat there and listened to it over and over and over again because it, we just couldn't believe how good this record was. Uh, to this day, it still remains as one of my all-time favourite records. Uh, I just think the songwriting on it is phenomenal, the harmonies, everything about it. So that's when I discovered Screeching Weasel and then, you know, <laughs> the rest is history. They just became one of my all-time favourite bands. So what I want to do today, I've had so many requests about this. A lot of people obviously know I'm a big Screeching Weasel fan. I've had people ask me comments about the tattoo, etc, etc. And so I figured I should, you know, just talk about it now and uh, go through my Screeching Weasel collection because I'm pretty sure it's complete. Not of every variant because I'm, I'm crazy but I'm not insane. But I have one of everything. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I do. But we'll go through it now because I have people all the time uh, message me about, you know, records. Oh, you should do a video on this band or you should do a video on this band. Uh, show us your collection of this band, etc. Well, we're going to go through Screeching Weasel today. So let's get stuck into it. What I'll do first is I'll start with the 7 inches uh, and go through those because um, there's a handful of them. And, you know, I'll, I'm pretty sure I'm going to miss one or two out. because I tried to find everything, but there's probably a compilation or two that I've just forgotten. I'm saying that ahead of time. I don't think I have, but just in case I have, uh, I'm letting you know because that happens. And I hate it when I do these collection videos and all of a sudden it's like, oh fuck, I forgot that one. But I've scoured, I'm pretty sure I've got them all. I could have just gone on Discogs, but uh, I, I like to think that I remember this shit off the top of my head. These are not in any particular order. I do have them, uh, a bunch of them on CD right up until Kill the Musicians. No, Television City Dream, I do have them on CD. But as I would have said in plenty of videos before this one, that all my CDs are in boxes under the bed. And I can't be bothered to pull them out and go through them all because there's literally thousands of the things. And I just, yeah, whatever. This is a vinyl channel, more than a CD channel. So let's get stuck into it. Well, here is the oldest one of the seven inches that I have, which is their split with the moving targets uh, released on What Goes On Records. And there you go there. Uh, so this is like the earliest, I think. This is from 1988. Uh, this is one of my favorite songs. Uh, this is Radio Blast with... Uh, the Girl Next Door on the B-side. The Girl Next Door is such a fantastic song. Blink-182 covered it. It's on that Buddha record uh, on their demo tape or whatever. Uh, so I'm sure Screech and Weasel have uh, 
done pretty well out of the royalties of that song alone because I remember the first time I saw Blink-182, they came out here and they played with Pennywise, uh, One Inch Punch and Body Jar, and they were the second band on, mind you. They weren't, you know, blowing up to the way that they became seen after. So this would have been 95, I think, around then. And uh, I've got the poster for it. If I can find the poster for that show... now nah, fuck it. You know, that I'll do a separate video on Blink-182 one day. But anyway... I remember them playing it and all of us freaked out. We're like, holy shit, they're doing Screeching Weasel because we'd never heard any bands do Screeching Weasel covers. Like, nobody was doing Screeching Weasel covers. Uh, but Scree Screeching Weasel obviously affected the likes of Blink because, yeah, Blink did a cover of The Girl Next Door and did a really good version of it. I think this is on Purple Vinyl or Burgundy, as it's called. So looks red on here but trust me it's burgundy this is a bootleg that i found in thrash grind and grunge for seven dollars uh it's called snappy answers to stupid questions it's a live to air radio broadcast on wfmu in radio east orange new jersey uh it was actually engineered and produced by nikki from the parasites uh so or dave parasite as he's known but uh yeah pretty cool selfless records release this one actually might not be a bootleg if it's on selfless but whatever i love this one this is a split that they did with born against and i found this two dollars used from radiation records so yeah bargain i couldn't just leave it there uh so yeah it says that it's um some vinyl wear it sounds fine it really does but yeah, these, all the songs on this record are fantastic. I actually have two copies of this one, but uh, the other one is like a mint copy that I found because like I found this one for $2 and then I found an actual mint one and it was like $5. So I bought that as well. Uh, just because, you know, it's Screeching Weasel and if it's cheap, I'll buy it because, you know, that's how I am with, uh, with buying punk singles because, to be honest, some of these records are now selling for stupid amounts of money on the secondary market, which makes no sense to me whatsoever because... What is punk rock about music being so unaffordable that only the rich can afford it? Doesn't make sense, man. Really doesn't make sense. Nothing punk rock about that. Formula 27. This is really, really cool. Came out on Vermiform, which really blew my mind when this came out because it's like Vermiform for known for, you know, like the, the likes of Born Against and Gravity Record stuff, you know, Heroin, those sorts of bands, whatever. And uh, yeah, Men's Recovery Project, stuff like that. So... To me, Vermiform and Gravity seem very similar in their in their output. They did a Screeching Weasel record, and this record is absolutely phenomenal. And I believe it came as extra tracks when they did the Ramones record on CD. This was on there as, as bonus tracks. I don't have that Ramones record on CD. I've got it on vinyl, but we'll get to that. Uh, Pervo Devo, the version of I Want to Be a Homosexual on this is different to the one that's on the 10-inch record that was released. I actually think this one with the spoken intro is just a better version of the song. Uh, I hope now that Kill the Musicians is being reissued on vinyl that they include both versions because it seems weird that the Kill the Musicians CD does not have uh, the version with the spoken intro but it does have the other two songs. I don't get it. Well, she's giving me the creeps. That's what's on the B-side. Is that right? And then I Fall to Pieces. Yeah, she's giving me the creeps. That's a great song. And then, yeah, I Fall to, a cover of I Fall to Pieces. This one comes with a zine called Teen Punks in Heat. Uh, but yeah, Pervo Devo, really, really cool. There's the back cover. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a zine inside it. Authorities Tribute 7 Inch. This is pretty cool. They do a version of Octung. It's also got Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, The Circus Tents, and Tesco V's Hate Police. I found this one from My Mind's Eye Records, and it was like $6. And I couldn't believe it because I knew it was one that I really needed, and I was looking for it. Could not find it anywhere. But then, yeah, I was in my mind's eye in 2012, 2013, and uh, I found it. Yeah, so 2013, I went there and bought a lot of records from there. Uh, I love this one, You Break My Fucking Heart. There's a song in here, Mary Was an Anarchist, which has always blown my mind. And then there's Goodbye to You, which uh, is such a good song. Goodbye to You is killer. And uh, yeah, really, really cool. So love that one. I don't have the other version of Susanna's Getting Married. I've only got the one with the... Uh, photo stuck on it. I've forgotten the story about why they put put the picture of the the photo on there. Maybe it's like a. I mean, I know, I know it's a cartoon cover underneath. Um, so yeah, but you know, I guess it's their version of the Butcher Babies by the Beatles or something. Suzanne is getting married. Cool song and waiting for Susie on the B side. Uh, what else we got here? This 
I hope also gets put on the new reissue of Kill the Musicians because it wasn't on the CD. It's the Screeching Weasel Jesus HG 7 inch, which was put out by Probe Records. Uh, I'll show you this side because I can get away with it, which is a bunch of covers um, and really good versions too. I mean, they, <laughs> Screeching Weasel covering the Stooges is pretty damn awesome. So there you go, they do do it. It's really, really cool. Uh, Punk House. This is one on Selfless Records. It's an original pressing. It's a, it's a reissue, but I remember I bought this back in the day whenever Spiral Objective was a thing. And yeah, because once I found my brain hurts, I needed everything. So I love this one. This is split with the Pink Lincolns. Uh, limited to 1,500 copies, apparently. Uh, but I love Going Home and Stab, Stab, Stab. I think they're absolutely phenomenal songs. But this is also what introduced me to the Pink Lincolns. I had not heard them before this, but once I bought this record, heard Pink Lincolns, and uh, yeah, ended up buying their records too. So, was it Vindictive Music put this one out? And this is the last one I have, which is a tribute to Screeching Weasel called Stab Screeching Weasel to Death. And yeah, pretty damn cool. It's got um, a bunch of bands on here. Like, I bought this from Radiation Records. So, I'll just give you the track listing there, and you can see what songs that they do. Uh, but this is really really cool because you know, like I said, I'd never really uh, Hear screeching weasel covers, but there you go double seven inch and on the labels the labels are cool because you have Gumby Can't go wrong with Gumby. He was once a little green clad of clay and he can walk into any book with his pony pal pokey too If you've got a heart make Gumby a part of you. So that's all the seven inches Oh, I do have this one too, which is there's a fungus among us which has them also on here as well so there you go what a lineup hey uh this is it out of the thing it comes with a booklet and stuff screech and weasel do a version of slogans on here so there you go you got the lyrics and stuff there um yeah it's it's pretty damn cool compilation that record is a shout out to uh left for damien from uh from fucked up the last time i saw damien he was at the radiation records tent at punk rock bowling and he was buying a copy of this with the purple cover and he had it in his hand and i was watching you know just like i saw him flicking through and i was sitting there going oh please put that back please put that back because i wanted this record because i didn't have it uh and then um yeah he he saw me and we started talking and then i said man i really want that record too and he bought it he bought it and so i was like ah well no worries and then when i went to radiation records i actually had another copy in stock for 12 dollars and so i was pretty stoked that i found it finally i do have ben weasel's books there's punk is a four letter word this is fantastic this is like all his columns and stuff from his zines and from max and rock and roll and stuff like that i really love this book i think the columns are hilarious uh so yeah if you haven't read punk as a four letter word i highly recommend tracking this one down i don't know if it's rare or anything uh, i found it on ebay for like ten dollars so uh yeah get yourself a copy of this it's really really good uh, i've also got like hell which is his other novel that he did this one's really really cool this is apparently a fictional piece of work but i reckon a lot of the stories on in this book that he's put in here were from real life tales of being a screech and weasel the same with jughead's book which is called Weasels in a Box. Uh, it's supposed to be fictional, but I guarantee most of the stuff in here is from his time in Screeching Weasel. So there we go. A couple of 10 inches that I have, which is uh, Falling Upon Deaf Ears, has them doing uh, soap opera. And look at the lineup of the bands on here. Like seriously, like, how crazy is that lineup? Like Nausea and Screeching Weasel on the same record. That's what's cool about punk rock. It can happen and it makes perfect sense when it does. Uh, this one is cool. This is What Are You Pointing At? And this does have the old version of I Want To Be A Homosexual and Kamala's Too Nice with different lyrics to Kamala's Too Nice. And I think we'll say I Want To Be A Homosexual has different lyrics too. But uh, this is a really, really cool comp. As you can see, Iconochrist and Screech Weasel on the same record. Doesn't seem like it would make sense, but it totally does. And it's a, it's a really cool comp. So cool 10-inch records there. Here's some more comps. Uh, it's a punk thing you wouldn't understand on Shake Fork Records. They do the song Selena. The Bow Weevils did an album where they uh, put all their singles and comp tracks on there. And I remember them saying in the liner notes something about thanks to Screeching Weasel because a lot of people picked up this record for the Selena song and discovered the Bow Weevils uh, with a song called Talk, which is a fantastic song. And that's exactly how I discovered the Bow Weevils was I bought this comp and uh, yeah. 
Talk is on there and it's so awesome. Uh, but yeah, Selena is such a good song too. Love that song. Uh, this one, Punk USA, any Screeching Weasel fan or fan of Lookout Records or whatever would have this record. Look at that lineup. Like, seriously, look at these songs. Like, this is like a who's who of awesome when it comes to uh, the punk rock stuff of that era. So, Punk USA is a fantastic comp. I love this comp. I still play it all the freaking time uh, just because every single song on it is good. Every single one. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the Garden Variety song. That only came on the CD version, but it doesn't matter because this is such a good comp. So, Punk USA. If you don't have it, you need it. Four on the floor. This is pretty cool. Basically, four bands doing four songs each, and it's got the Teen Idols, Enemy U, Moral Crew, and Screeching Weasel kicking off the record there, and there are their songs. So, this, again, four more songs that I hope end up on this new reissue of Kill the Musician, so we've got them all in one place rather than having to pick up all these comps and stuff if you just want to listen to Screeching Weasel. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, let's go through the albums. Now, these are not in any particular order. I'm just going to show them because I can't be bothered doing them in order because that's just a nightmare. Uh, this is one of my favourite records of the later period of Screeching Weasel, Some Freaks of Adivism. Uh, I have three copies of this because I jumped on it when it first came out in America and I bought two copies of the orange vinyl. And I bought two because I know that I was going to play it all the fucking time and it was going to wear out the grooves and I'd, I'd need a backup copy because this album is just that good. So... They are still in America at my friend's house and I need to go and get them uh, next time I go over to America. So because I, you know, COVID happened and all this shit and I couldn't get over to America and even now the, the plane ticket prices are still a bit too expensive, uh, I bought myself another copy. This one's white vinyl, I believe, from memory. I can't remember. It doesn't really matter anyway. Who gives a shit what color it's on? Uh, I did get all five versions of this only because... Uh, they did a bundle on the Striped website and I just thought fuck it but I bought a whole bunch of shit off Striped at the time and I just bought the bundle at the same time I don't know why I don't need five copies uh, but surprisingly enough I've actually played all five <laughs> so because uh, I just grab one and just put it on whenever it's there so you know I do listen to that album a lot I really like that album there's so many good songs on this record while I think Some Freaks of Addism is a stronger record overall I still love this record uh, I really do Hey Diana that's a really good song Hey Diana this could be us this could be you and I fucking great song really really good song but uh, yeah this one's the green vinyl because green's my favourite colour my friends both versions of Anthem for a New Tomorrow, the remix, remaster, and the original. I've already done a video on these. We don't need to go into that. You can uh, go backwards if you want to see my video on Screech and Weasel on that record. Uh, Weasel Mania on yellow vinyl. This was when Fat Wreck was announcing that they had signed or re-signed uh, Screech and Weasel to put out uh, the first World Manifesto album. And that relationship didn't last very long, but uh, they, they released this at the time, and... I jumped on it because I had never owned Weasel Mania and I figured I should because it was a Screeching Weasel record and I needed it in my collection. And they'd remastered it as well. They remastered the songs, I believe. But there's a track listing if you've never seen it. So there you go. I don't have a Lookout version of Wiggle on vinyl. I do have the CD though. Uh, but I do have two different versions of the Recess Records reissues. Uh, I remember I bought one of these from somewhere and then when I was in America I saw another copy and it was like $10 or $11 or something used but the it looked mint to me it looked like it never even been played so I bought it so and it still looks like it's never been played even though I play it all the time uh, the Holy Grail for me uh, not that it's a Holy Grail because I ended up buying it as soon as I could find the vinyl version was My Brain Hurts so like I said had the CD uh, but yeah, as soon as I found a vinyl copy of this, I bought it. Um, $14. Bargain. Thank you, Spiral Objective. You are awesome. Uh, the Carnival of Schadenfraud, which he did after that fiasco in Texas. Uh, this was the release there. That's a really good EP. Uh, this is probably my least listened to Screeching Weasel record. It's Team Punks in Heat. There are good tracks on it, I'm not going to lie. But it is my least listened to record of theirs. Uh, so there you go. 
on the back there. I do have the original version of Television City Dream on CD. I don't have it, but I do have the reissue here that was put out by Fat, uh, which is, it's a great, great record. I love Speed of Mutation. I think we all do though, right? Really, really good record. And I got both versions of How to Make Enemies. Um, I think this one was remastered, but I bought it anyway because I love this cover art. I really do love this cover art. I think it's a lot better than this one. Uh, although, you know, whatever. This is the one that I guess the diehards want because it's the lookout one. And it's got Mike Dirt in it from Green Day. So the bass is huge on it. And the bass is amazing. It really, really sounds good. Really fat sound bass. Uh, yeah, I love this artwork. And it's a gay fold sleeve too. Look how the back cover looks so cool. But yeah, love that record. I remember one time I met Barbara Felden and uh, she plays 99 in the show Get Smart, for those who don't know. And that song 99 is obviously an ode to her. I actually said to her straight out, I, I said, uh, Barbara, did you ever hear the song by the band Screeching Weasel called 99 that was about you? And she sat there and thinking about it going, it sounds familiar. Yeah, it does. Chicago band, right? And immediately, I was like, oh my God, so switched on you, exactly what city they were from. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's him. She goes, yeah, somebody sent me the CD. I don't know if the band did that or somebody knew her or did that or whatever, but if you didn't know Ben, now you do. Barbara knows about your song. This is the original one that came out. It's on black vinyl. This is a reissue that's on colored vinyl. Picked this up at Punk Rock Bowling. $15. Bargain. And uh, yeah, I remember the day that this came out, I went to the city, I bought it from Big Star Records. Uh, I went to the city, I was so fucking excited that this had come out. It was really weird, because at the time, Spiral Objective was carrying all the fat record stuff. And then the when punk started getting more and more popular, all the uh, other stores that didn't really get the indie stuff started ordering in the Offspring and the no Effects and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, Screeching Weasel was, I guess, on their radar. And so, like I said, I bought this from Big Star Records in the basement there. They had it there. I was pretty blown away when I found it, too. There's Emo. Released on Panic Button Records and Lookout. So, there we go. Not much to say about Emo. I like it, but it's, you know, it's not blowing my mind at all. Okay, um, I got this one off Jeremy from Caustic Soda, actually. He was selling a bunch of his records because he lives in Japan now. And he sold me this one. And uh, it is the bootleg of Boogada 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 that was released on Nate Starkman and Son Records. I'd never heard of him either. And he, that was his thing that he wrote for it, his little hype sticker. The back cover looks like that. And this one I bought from uh, Vinyl Solution in Huntington Beach. It is the Roadkill Records version of Boogada Booga. So I love it. It is so cool. This was the most I've ever spent on a Screeching Weasel record. It was $50. And uh, yeah. I, I was immediately like, oh, 50 bucks, fuck it. I'm never going to see it again. So, um, yeah, there you go. It's got the insert and shit. It doesn't have, I think there's supposed to be like a poster, a naked poster or something like that. It doesn't have that. But there's the label, Roadkill Records. Uh, but there you go. Booker to Booker is such a good record. I wish I had the green color version, obviously because my favorite color is green. But, you know, whatever. i got two copies. I don't need another one. Uh, okay, cool. The first Screeching Weasel record. Ben Weasel apparently doesn't like this record. I think it's fantastic. I love it. Murder at the Brady House is such a good song. It is. And I wish I would play it live. Uh, the only record that I think, you know, I don't have was obviously the Ozfish Experience, but only two people in the world own that because there's only two test pressings and that's it. Uh, but yeah, we're not even going to worry about that because there's one on Discogs for 30 grand and that's just fucking stupid. Uh, but yeah. Here we go, the first record. So, look at Ben with long hair. Looks a bit like Glenn Danzig there, but um, there you go. Very, very cool. I was stoked when I finally was able to buy this, and I got it really cheap too. Uh, I got it for like $28 or something, so it wasn't that much to buy this. Um, so, yeah, I love that record. I have two versions of uh, First World Manifesto, uh, one's on gold, one's on black vinyl, and they're both gatefold, and uh, I love this record so much, I play this record all the time still, uh, Follow Your Leaders is great, Beginningless Vacation so good, Dry as the Desert, oh my god, when it comes to writing, you know, I guess the power ballad of pop punk, 
Ben Weasel is a god at that. Like, he can fucking nail that shit. And Dry as a Desert is a perfect example of, you know, those slow love songs. Also, Your, Your Name is Tattooed on My Heart is another beautiful song as well that uh, he just knows how to do it, you know? Knows how to write those slow, fucking amazing pop punk tunes, which I guess is the pop punk version of a power ballad. But I love this record. Fucking solid record. The last one they did for Fat. Here's the Ramones record. I gotta say, this is actually this is probably my least listened to record. And if I'm gonna listen to Ramones songs, I'm just gonna listen to the Ramones. Uh, but you know, every once in a while, you know, if I have friends over or whatever, and they go through records and they they go, oh wow, you've got that Screeching Weasel Ramones record. I'll put it on and we'll listen to it. And yeah, it's all right, but you know, I'd rather listen to the Ramones version of it. Uh, two versions of Baby Fat. One of them is the clear vinyl version, which I think is only limited to 100 copies or some shit like that. I don't know, but it was for like people who pre-ordered the album and stuff, which, you know, being a nerd, that's what nerds do. And then I found a version in a bargain bin at uh, 1234 Go Records in San Francisco. And uh, because it was in a bargain bin, <laughs> it was really cheap. Like, I guess they had trouble selling this. Uh, a lot of people don't like this record. I actually think this record's really, really good. Shout out to Kat Spazzy from Melbourne uh, for uh, doing vocals on it. But the Black Dahlia song in here called Things Aren't So Bad After All, I love that song. Love that song a lot. Last but not least is Major Label Debut. I love this record. I think uh, Lumley's drumming on this is absolutely insane, especially the song DIY. I thought playing at that speed was left to Dave Lombardo, but nope, it's not. Lumley is a machine. So if you know his drumming and you've heard the song DIY, you know how fucking insane that guy is on the drums. To play that speed just blows my mind. Like when I was a drummer, I dreamed of being able to play that punk beat that fast. I think uh, Smelly from No Effects can do it, but uh, to play that fast and just be that fucking tight. Like, I wonder how many times he, like, played that song. Like, I wonder how many times he, how many takes he did of it, or if it was a, a one take thing, because just playing at that speed, you have to hear the song to understand. And it's got changes, time changes, and shit. And, oh my god, I would love Screech Weasel to play DIY live, you know, if I ever get to see them again. Uh, but, yeah, I'm sure they never will, but fuck me, that is such a good song. This whole EP rules, so if you have not heard Major Label Debut, uh, I highly recommend you check it out. Race of Society, what a great song that is. Uh, the Compact Disc, which is funny, and because uh, you're playing it on record, but the first line is the thing you're listening to is a compact disc. No, it's not. But anyway, uh, yeah. Hey, arsehole. <laughs> Man. Uh, one of the last things I will show you is um, my friend Cotton is uh, is involved with Screeching Weasel, and Cotton is like one of the coolest people I know. Uh, he's he's just a great friend all round, and one day he sent me a collection of Screeching Weasel posters, and they are all here. And while I'm holding up my thumb, it's going to flick through every single poster that I have of Screeching Weasel in the time that I'm holding up this thumb. And I think that's long enough. So, yeah, these are all the Screeching Weasel posters I have. But anyway, he also sent me this, which is handwritten lyrics to the song My Right. My Right is a song of Booga Da Booga Da, as if you didn't already know. I love that song. I was so blown away when he sent these to me. Uh, it's got, like marks on the back which probably Ben's thumbprint who the fuck knows um, but yeah I'm just so stoked that he got there I really got to get this framed I really do he's also sent me tons of stuff like I got I got a bunch of stickers from him and guitar picks and stuff uh, if I can find the guitar picks they're going to be popping up here on the screen right now so uh, yeah Screech and Weasel guitar picks I'm so thankful to Cotton like he just blew my mind that day I just remember getting getting that pile of posters and uh, one of them is signed by every member from every band that played that show. It's this one. But anyway, Screeching Weasel, one of the bands that I always wanted to see live. Now, there was a time that they almost came to Australia. Uh, it didn't happen. I don't know what the story is. If you know the story, leave it in the comments. <laughs> but I don't know the story. Apparently they were going to come out here and then they never did. But anyway, I did get to see Screeching Weasel. I did. I saw them on the 17th of August, 2013. I know that because I have it tattooed on my arm. I got this tattoo 
when I returned home from America, I saw them at Santa Ana at the observatory with the dwarves, uh, the bugs, and the angry Samoans. And so I got the date tattooed on there as well because I'm probably never going to see Screech and Weasel again. But that show meant so much to me. Uh, I'd wanted to see them for so long since, what, 1990, 1991, whatever it was. And I finally got to see them live. And so I never thought it was going to happen. But basically what was going on in, uh, in 2013, I was just like, I was going to go for Riot Festival. And Screech and Weasel played that as well. That wasn't the better of the two shows. I saw them twice. But uh, this show was the one. This was fucking mind-blowing this show so I started my holiday there and I ended it at Riot Festival so I was there for a month and I just remember the the, sto- the best story about this night is uh, I remember my friend Peter she's a big Screech and Weasel fan too she has a Screech and Weasel tattoo as well a zombied weasel face on her arm and uh, she's one of my one of my good friends and we were both the way we met is because we were both going to go over for that weasel fest uh, that was happening in Chicago. We were both had tickets to it. We were both going over for it. And then all of a sudden, all that shit in Texas happened and that was all cancelled. So we didn't get to go. She still went on a holiday anyway. But that's how we connected. We became friends on Twitter uh, way back in the day when I had a Twitter. That's how we became friends. And uh, we we just started talking about Screech and Weasel and other bands and whatever. But anyway, I messaged her from the show when the Dwarves had finished and you know, Screech and Weasel were on in 20 minutes or whatever it was. And I wrote to her and said, I can't believe I'm going to see Screech and Weasel in 20 minutes. And she sent me a message back that said, that is 20 minutes that they can still cancel. <laughs> I, I had to laugh. I couldn't believe it. You know, it was such a Peter thing to say. That show was fucking amazing. I took tons of photos. It was just so good. Like that video you saw at the beginning of this video, that was how they opened the show. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to strangle you. I couldn't believe it. I was just fucking blown away. It was such a good night. I had the time of my life, and when I left that show, I just couldn't believe it. I just sat there with the biggest smile on my face, and I was like, I cannot believe I just saw fucking Screech and Weasel Live, a band that I've wanted to see my entire life, and uh, I finally got to see them. Also, if you're wondering what they played, the set list is here, and I'll keep that set list up while I'm talking so that you can go through it all and uh, you know do what I do and uh, make yourself a playlist of that exact same set list and listen to it and relive the moment, if you will. Uh, the show was amazing. I'm so glad that I got to see them then. I didn't know whether I was going to see them at Riot Festival because they may have been clashing with another band. Uh, but, you know, I did go to Riot Festival. I did see Screech and Weasel again, but it wasn't the same. And the reason why I feel it wasn't the same, while the show was still great, I feel it wasn't the same because I I didn't have that built up crazy amount of excitement like, you know, I can't believe I'm going to see this band for the first time ever. I didn't have that excitement for it because I had seen them like four weeks before or whatever, but I was still excited. Uh, It was still a great set, but they only played for like 40 minutes or something, so they didn't play as long as they did at the Observatory show, so that may have been why I love the Observatory show as well, because it was longer. But either way, it was mind-blowing. I'm glad I got to see them, Uh, and um, thank you to whoever it was that let me photograph her set list. Uh, She got the set list and I just said to her hey can I get a photo of it you know because I want to remember the set list in its entirety and uh, yeah so cheers to you miss thank you so much Uh, I went to the show on my own but I had the time of my life I felt like I was surrounded by friends it was just such a great gig so there we go that is my journey with Screech and Weasel they still put out great records and I'm so excited for Kill the Musicians to finally get released on vinyl they did say it was going to be a two volume set so I hope that means that they've included all those songs that were not included on uh, on, on the original uh, release there on CD. Thank you so much once again for watching another episode of the Long Gone Loser Rock Show. Look after yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.